Figure it out. Hello, this is Adam Carlick with Flying and Eating. Today, let's go somewhere and do something. And make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Hey everyone, it's Adam here. On the previous episode of Flying and Eating, we were supposed to go out to Tokyo Haneda. We got rerouted through Houston onto Tokyo Narita with the ultimate goal of getting down to Saipan in the U.S. territory of the Commonwealth of the Northern Mariana Islands. And now, we are at Tokyo Narita with a lot of time to kill. Oof, I have so many memories walking around Narita. I used to come through this door all the time, out here. Um, Actually, since we're, we're here for the moment, I'll give you guys a pro tip. If you ever do have to land at Narita and you actually want to go into the city, because I will remind people who didn't see the other videos, <clears throat> Tokyo has two primary airports, Narita and Haneda. Uh, Haneda is the one you want to land at if you're actually planning to stay in Tokyo. Narita is the one you go to if you're transiting. Uh, because it's really an inconvenient location. I am using it for transit, however, I'm not doing it until tomorrow. However, if you were to say, actually land here and be like, I'm going to Tokyo, and you want to get into town, there's a number of ways you can do that, including the trains. But if you're just like, hey, I want to take a bus, but I want to take a nice bus, right here. They have a thing called the limousine line. I used to use that all the time. It sounds fancier than it is. It's just a nice bus that uh, you would go out there, and uh, they would take your bags, they check them in there, and then they just drive you all the way to like Yokohama Station. It's very convenient. Um, but if you want to feel like learning the train system, that's an option too. It's like six o'clock now. <laughs> My flight is at 9.30 p.m. tomorrow. <laughs> so I got a day. The thing is, you guys don't understand unless you've been here, Narita is truly not near anything. It, it's really not even worth the effort to try and go into town, uh, especially because I'm exhausted and I'm gonna have jet lag and all that. So the interesting thing about Narita is they built it trying to get Tokyo to kind of expand north, um, northeast, but it never really happened. So they just kind of ended up with this airport out in the middle of nowhere. Um, so the most exciting thing in the area is the airport. So it's cool. It's got like this gigantic mall and stuff in it. They have this whole big Nintendo check-in thing, although it's closed at the moment when I'm here. But uh, I actually don't really know much about what this is other than just a promo thing. But I took a few photos of the Sega Pluto just sitting in front of that because I have a penchant for the ironic. This is what you're looking for. You want the airport mall, which is both on the fourth floor and the fifth floor. Tomorrow I'll have to come back here and check in for my flight and all that. But that's not where we're going. We're going here, and you can also go there. This whole section is huge. It's just tons of stores and restaurants, and actually there is a really good ramen place here. Hopefully it still exists. If you guys will indulge me for just one second, uh, a few years ago, uh, before my mother passed away, we took a trip out here. Specifically, we took a trip to Guam, which if you guys saw my Guam videos from like a year ago, I told you all about this, but we had originally changed planes here at Narita, and we spent a lot of time here. This is, of course, a Starbucks. My mom didn't even drink coffee. Uh, she loved tea, but she loved going to the Starbucks all the time. That table right there that I'm pointing to, we sat there for hours just hanging out um, before the flight, obviously. And uh, yeah, I guess that would, be the, that would be like the last time I ever got to see her, and of course, Narita. Um, but um, yeah, just sharing a moment. I appreciate that they explain what McDonald's sells in case there's somebody that doesn't know. <laughs> Actually, admittedly, Japanese McDonald's, they are interesting. They smell different because they use different oils and stuff. And they actually have a lot of different stuff on the menu. This is the Samurai Mac. It has eggs and stuff in it. I don't even know, hash browns, I don't know. Clearly different, that's way cooler than what we get. A lot of stuff is just shut down. And this is clearly like permanently shut down. This is, you know, like, Clearly the pandemic killed these places, which makes sense. I mean, if you're entirely based an economy on an airport and then you don't allow people in, that's what happens. So this place can be a little confusing, but uh, odds are if you're here, you have a lot of time. It's wedged in between the south wing and the north wing. Um, so you just kind of wander around and shop and uh, yeah, it, it'll take a little getting used to, but you'll, you'll eventually pick up on the flow of this place. Uh, and everything kind of ends up feeding right back to itself. So like the Starbucks that we were at before is now like right down over there. And all we did was just kind of walk around here and everything kind of ends up meeting back around here. This was the ramen place. It doesn't look permanently closed, but I guess I don't know if it's temporary or not. Um, it could just be because it's like basically around New Year's the time I'm recording this. But you can see like the plastic versions. Maybe we can uh, get one of these tomorrow if the place still 
exists, to be honest, I, I don't know. You remember where I was when I said everything funnels around to the center? I was standing right there. <laughs> everything eventually funnels around here. Like there's the ramen place that isn't open. That place is open, whatever it is. There, the sushi place is open, we might do that, we'll see. Um, but yeah, just kind of fifth floor, you've got a bunch of capsule toys. Like I said, it's, it's, it's a mall. Okay, so we're gonna head out uh, and go to the hotel. Now, normally in Japan, I would always tell you, just take the train. But again, Narita is, there's nothing here. <laughs> so one of the things that they do to make everybody's lives a little easier is that most of the Narita hotels will have just a free shuttle. Uh, so I'm basically gonna go show you where you have to go for that. Okay, so for argument's sake, let's say you just cleared customs. This is the door you came out of. Now you want to find your uh, shuttle to the airport. Well, or sorry, to the hotel. You just go straight out this door that currently says Terminal 1, S2, first floor. And then outside you'll see a whole bunch of different buses. That one right there, the airport limousine, that's what I was talking about before. That'll take you to more significant destinations. Airport shuttles are like right there in the center part, uh, usually around that number 16. And unless something has changed, they typically have a whole bunch of signs posted for various hotels in the area and the basic times in which those hotels shuttles will be here. So the key here is to go look on that list and uh, find yours. So the last thing you guys saw was me just walking out towards the bus. Um, just by coincidence, the bus that was there on the left was actually mine. Hence, I'm, <laughs> I got on it right away and went straight to the hotel. I'm sorry, I didn't even have a chance to show you guys. Like, there's, if you go back a little bit and look, there's on the side of the on the right frame, um, there was like this board, and it had uh, it would have had listings of all these hotels and the different times. My guy just happened to actually be there at the moment I walked out. Otherwise, I would have done that. But you got it's good to pay attention to that because that can it can be hours between buses. So it's good to know that and then like go back inside. I was planning to just go over there, scout the information, and then go inside. I was not expecting him to just be like, I'm here already. Like that doesn't usually happen. Uh, but anyway, I am now at the hotel. So let's take a look. It's a um, a cheap Japanese airport hotel. I don't expect you shouldn't expect much. It's, it's basically just a room. It's actually surprising. It's funny. It's bigger than the place I stayed at in Yokohama for like two weeks. Jet lag palsy. Something you can do to try and fight it is desperately try not to sleep until you absolutely need to. Like my normal go to bed time is like 10 p.m. Uh, so I'm gonna hold out to like midnight. That way I sync up as best as possible. And I'm gonna need a lot of sleep because tomorrow is gonna be. Yeah, we'll talk about it tomorrow. You will run into this problem where they only have the two prong style in Japan and oh no, I'm screwed. What am I going to do? If only I had prepared, I did. <laughs> yeah, you should always have one of these if you're ever going to Japan. You're not always going to need it. Uh, it's just a simple adapter that removes the ground charge because it's usually not necessary. Um, but uh, this will, the simple adapter, make it all work. Ohio gozaimasu. It is day four, I think. We kind of technically, I think we just skipped day three. Like it, it happened, <laughs> but it was so jet lagged. I had no idea what was happening, um, and all that. So yeah, that was you know time zones, of course, are pain. But uh, anywho, uh, so yes, I slept for twelve hours. Uh, my plan to stay up past midnight did not quite work. I conked out around eight p.m. I just couldn't do it anymore. Um, so I went down hard, and then I I woke up predictably at like 2 a.m. But I had, apparently I had the presence of mind. I don't even remember doing this, but I had the presence of mind to be somewhat ready, and I kept this on standby melatonin. So when I woke up at 2 a.m., I remember like taking a few of those and then just going right back to sleep. So um, it's it's morning now, and I've just woken up, and I feel pretty good. Now we're back at Narita. We're specifically at Narita Airport Terminal 1. Little pro tip, Narita's huge. Uh, Terminal 1 and Terminal 2 are technically connected, but they are not easy to come across, like get from one to the other. Uh, there's a shuttle and there's stuff like that, but it's best to know in advance which one you're actually going to, because then they will just drop you right off. So I knew I was going to be at Terminal 1. That's what you've seen footage of so far. Terminal 1 is the international terminal. And so I will be on that because we're going down to Saipan, which is part of the Commonwealth of the Northern Mariana Islands, which is a U.S. territory about four hours away. Uh, so we will head over to the United section and potentially drop off our bag. Here's the key, though. My flight's not till like 9.50 p.m. It's like 10.30 in the morning right now. 
we got a lot of time, guys. And here's the sad part. United Airlines does actually treat Narita as an international hub. They even have a United Club here, so it would sound obvious what the plan is, right? The United Club here shut down when the pandemic started, and while it physically exists, they have not reopened it yet. So none of that. <laughs> We're going back to the little mall section, and we'll try to find food, and I don't know, man, it's going to be a day. It is going to be a day. I think I'm going to go with this, the noodle and rice combo, which kind of looks like that. So it's udon noodles with pork loin katsu and egg on rice. I think that that will be a good, good starter. So of course the menus are, you know, mostly Japanese, but they have English on there. And so I just kind of study what I want. And just a reminder on some of the language tips, the easiest thing to do is just to point at something and say, uh, kore ni shi ma su, uh, which just means like, I'll go with this. Um, and, uh, you know, if you, in that case, the noodles can be either hot or cold, so I wanted it hot, and the word for that, or what you can say that will be understood is hatsui, which just means, like, it's hot. You know, that's your gaijin, they don't expect perfect, but that's enough to say, like, I want the hot noodles, I'll go with this one, whatever. Um, so, yeah, and then, of course, what do you want to drink? A mizu is water, is what I was going to go for. So after all this, though, then we're going to go get coffee. Food has arrived. So on this side we've got our udon with uh, various things in it that we'll deal with in a second. Some basically vegetation stuff that we can throw in there, uh, sauces, things like that. And then over here we have our uh, basically our pork katsu. So I went ahead and mixed this up. The small little amendment. Uh, this is actually what this is. It's spicing. It wasn't a sauce. I apologize. Um, but yeah, you can see the noodles there. Now we just let it cool off a bit because I suffer from cat tongue. But I think we can dive into that at this point. So I've obviously eaten most of it at this point, but just to show you, to be sure what it is, uh, it's pork and uh, fried pork with uh, rice and sauces and there's egg in there. So I just came out of there. It's pretty good. You know, um, the the pork cutlet was definitely the best part. I mean, it's not surprising. Like they, they clearly excel at tempura stuff. I mean, that's, they make a whole big deal, of a, a deal about that. Um, the udon was just kind of okay. I was craving this, but it doesn't exist anymore, or at least currently it doesn't, so. But uh, yeah, you can check that out if you're ever at Narita, it's a good option. I've been tasked with something and it gives me something to do, so we're going to have it happen. I'm going to be seeing my buddy Brian down in Guam, if you guys saw those videos like a year ago. And I asked him if he want anything Japanese and he was just like, candy. <laughs> so we'll see what we can come up with. Brian specifically said he wanted something weird, so we got chocolate corn. I don't know, <laughs> but uh, I'll also give him some Kit Kats and I can give him one of these each. Okay, so this is really cool. If you go into the food court, there's an observation deck. You come outside, you'll end up here, and that's where all these people are. And you can just sit here and watch the planes take off and uh, land. And So, I mean, this is not the type of area I would have ever spent a whole lot of time in, but given that I've got all day here, this is cool. Like, yeah, it's this observation deck thing, man. Yeah, you can sit here and just watch planes take off and land if you want to. I mean, it's a good way to at least kill, like, you know, a few minutes. I mean, the fact that they built this and there's just people out here, but it's true, man, like, other than the planes, there's nothing to look at, because Narita, again, was built on a farm. There, there's, like, a farm next door. <laughs> like, there's nothing else here, so there's nothing really to look at other than the planes. So up on the second floor, they have the whole bunch of capsule toy machines. Some are kind of cool, like Planet of the Apes stuff. Some are confusing. Butter, okay. Uh, and uh, then they just have other, like, things like Peanuts, like Charlie Brown is still very popular here. Uh, but then you'll also see some that I think are just kind of neat because you just can't believe, like, look at this. It, you know, Pennywise. And then down here, suddenly a love for Pepsi. <laughs> and then they have even more over here with this little, like, I don't know if that's the lion or the sun or the sun and a lion combined. You know, some of these I just question, like, why, who, who wants a Morse keypad <laughs> toy? That's awesome, though. <laughs> and for an entire generation who has no idea what Morse keys are, Watch Independence Day, you know, the Aliens movie. At the end, that's how they're all communicating, is with Morse code. <laughs> oh my god. They have officially licensed Denny's toys. Like, why would you? <laughs> and of course, they do the little hamburger thing. If you guys saw the videos they did before, that's almost adorable. <laughs> So I have a little story time for you guys if you don't mind. So I'm in this little area. Uh, right outside there is where all the gates are, where you check in more accurately. And this is kind of the beginning point where you go to the stores and then upstairs to the fifth floor. So a couple of years ago when my mom and I were here for just the one day, 
Um, we were on this side. We hadn't gone through security yet. We just thought we'd do some shopping, whatever. And um, the thing is, that as I keep saying, there's nothing else here at Narita other than the airport. So if you actually live out here, uh, sometimes people come here just for entertainment or for, let's say, resources, for lack of a better way of putting this. Um, so we were just standing pretty much in this exact spot, like right here. And all of a sudden there was this guy and he just started pointing at us and saying, oh, guy, you know, like trying to, and he wasn't trying to talk to us. He was talking to, we found out later, he was talking to his niece. And uh, then he came over and he talked to us in English. And he was like, hi, I'm sorry. Um, if you don't, if it's not too much trouble, if you're not in a rush, uh, my niece is currently doing a project uh, for her school and she needs to be able to talk to people in English. Um, which was funny because one, that made sense because if you live anywhere out here and you need to talk to tourists or gaijin, this is the most obvious place to find us. We're always wandering around in the airport. And uh, secondly, my mom actually taught English to uh, people in other countries. She would go down to Vietnam and teach it there, and that, especially Vietnam, but like a few different places. Um, but that was one. So when she was talking to the student, it, it, it was pretty cool for her. So she asked us some basic questions like, what were you doing in Japan? You know, just just stuff that a high school student would think of, you know? And uh, that was pretty cool. And afterwards, the girl gave us both these little origami like birds. We both kept them. Now I still have mine. Mine's actually at my desk where I edit uh, like these videos. The other one was in my mom's bedroom. Unfortunately, my mom's house was basically destroyed in a house fire last year. And uh, the bird did not make it. Um, but the the whole story there, the whole memento of it was nice because my mom said like on the whole trip that particular moment was the highlight because she was never one for the culture so much and the food and all that stuff, that didn't mean anything to her. So she had no real interest in coming to Japan. Even though she had been here many times, it was just never that important to her. But she said that moment, that was the best thing that ever happened to her because that's what she liked the most was interacting with locals and trying to talk and learn more about them. And she always said, the problem with the Japanese, at least from her perspective, again, uh, was that they didn't really want to interact all that much with you, which is actually true. It's, it's kind of rare for an actual Japanese to want to get to know you, like interaction beyond just exchange of goods and things like that, which I've always been fine with. But uh, actual Japanese, like becoming your friends is very, very difficult, as a lot of people who live in Japan, like Gaijin, like myself, will tell you that can be very challenging. So for her, when she wanted to get to know anybody, it was kind of impossible to do so. So that one moment of that girl just wanting to get to know us, even if it was just for something as you know, inane or benign, I should say more accurately, as a school project, that meant something. So that happened, and it happened right here. So right here in this section, this is where I will be ultimately checking in, and over here there's a subway, like this area, right? And then there's like a special entrance for VIPs and whatever. Um, a few years ago, I was actually stopped like right there by a camera crew. There was a show in Japan, I forget the name of it, but the basic idea is uh, it's called something like, Why Did You Come to Japan? And it's a show that just interviews basically tourists and just asks them questions about why they're here. Usually, honestly, the the punchline of the joke of every show is just like stupid gaijin that did something dumb and like, why did you come here? Oh, I just came here for sushi. You know, like just some stupid answer, right? So anyway, I got interviewed. I have no idea if it ever aired. They gave me this piece of paper that explained like, I still have the paper actually that just kind of says like what this was about. Um, but I I'd spent the entire time because I was here for some, uh, at the time, I think it was for the Shenmue 3 thing. Uh, that was years ago. And I basically explained that. I have no idea if it ever aired, but uh, it was pretty cool. Since I will realistically never take you guys to a subway in Japan, I figured I would show you this one while we're here. So this is uh, some of the Japanese sandwiches. They call it the Italian Chinovo Club or the American Barbecue Club. Um, but they have various ones. The more interesting ones are the ones like this, where it's shrimp avocado. Uh, you can actually get beer at subways here too which is kind of cool to be honest with you not that i would drink it but i think it's neat but yeah that that would be the big thing if you're ever like i like subway and i want to try something different the shrimp avocado one that's going to be the special thing these are pretty cool by the way um i learned about this when i had to it doesn't really matter point is you can drop luggage off here you can basically just put those in there and then come and get back and get it later if for any reason you need to do that uh the coin lockers keep an eye out they usually have them in train stations and at the airports here this is super useful. It tells you everything before passport control while you're still technically in Japan that you can go and get. And here's all the stuff afterwards. So you can get McDonald's at either one. <laughs> but uh, yeah, they have more options, but some of the stuff just goes away. We're gonna go get some sushi, I think. Why not? 
Kaiten, Kaiten Sushi Misaki, I think is how you pronounce that. Um, the, this funny, the sign refers to this as train sushi, even though it's conveyor belt, but they prefer to it as a train. Don't know why. Okay, as soon as you're in here, there's a tablet that gets you set up and has different languages. I what, you know, set it to English, asking about soup and starter. I don't need any of that. I just want sushi. So I imagine you can just take stuff straight off or you can order specifically what you want. So I just came out of there. Um, first of all, it was very good. Second of all, much more expensive than, say, Kura sushi. Now, granted, we are in an airport. <laughs> that must be acknowledged. I, do, I would argue that the caliber of the sushi was better then, of course, something like Hama Sushi or Kura Sushi, which is to be expected. The fatty tuna in particular is fantastic. But it did cost like twice as much as the same meal would over a Kura Sushi. So keep that in mind. Um, but yeah, this place is good. And, you know, um, the way it works, each one of these places is slightly different. This one does a color coding system based on the little plates. And the plates indicate the price. Uh, so you... you you know it in advance, but it's it's easy to get carried away. So keep that in mind. Um, but yeah, no, it, overall it was solid. I would I, there was this option, and then beyond security, there is like a different sushi place. I've been to it before. I don't recommend that one only because that one's a lot more expensive. This is cool because it's just like you know the conveyor belt stuff as opposed to like pre-ordering an entire like thing. I like this type of thing better. So I thought I'd point this out. Uh, there is actually a all-purpose credit card members lounge over here. That's what this sign is referring to. And that's what these people are waiting for. I've actually been in there before. It's not the same as like the United Club, but it's a similar concept. You know, you just go in, maybe we can even sneak a shot back there. Eh, not much of one. Um, and if you're a member of any of these things, then you can get in there. I used to be a member of Priority Pass because it was a perk of one of the credit cards I used to have. Uh, that lounge in particular has like free soda and free coffee and stuff, but it doesn't have food or anything like that. It's just a comfortable place to charge your phone and get free drinks. So at this point, my flight is still like four hours from now. <laughs> it's been a long day, although I know people would complain about this type of thing. I don't mind sitting around, like I'm good, like I can find ways to amuse myself as you guys have seen. Um, but we're at the point where there really is nothing else for me to do on this side. The next logical thing to do is to actually go through the exit customs and security process, so might as well. That'll allow me some time to at least show you guys some stuff on the other side. So here at the Departures Face Express thing, this is where we're basically going to scan our boarding pass and uh, go through it. This acts essentially as your ID. So. TSA, again, is an American construct, so that wouldn't be here. This is their version of it. Beyond that is the normal airport security, you know, where you put all your stuff in the bins and they x-ray it and all that sort of thing. After that is when you go through exit customs. Uh, I can't show you much footage of that area because once you get beyond this point, the Japanese get a little iffy about you filming anything. Okay, I'm through security. Now, here's a, here's a pro tip because... I don't remember Haneda doing this, but I guess Narita still cares about this. I had to take my laptop out, you know, kind of like the olden days back in the U.S. So I thought to do that when she was like, oh, take the laptop out, no problem. What I forgot all about, because I guess I didn't think that they would think of it this way, was the Sega Pluto. They thought it was a computer, so I had to do the double check. So here we are at the repacking phase. <laughs> Little do they know what, it, you know, <laughs> rare prototype console. All right, so now that we're done with that, we go down to immigration. So I can describe this to you. Basically down there, it's like this big room. Uh, if you can imagine just down there, there's usually a guy who's willing to take your little receipts in case you got any tax-free stuff, which doesn't seem to be a factor too much anymore. And just down there, going this way, is exit customs, which is just, you know, guys with the passports, stamping and all that stuff. But they probably won't allow me to show you that. Well, that was slightly different. Uh, they've updated. You can see a little bit of like a machine right there. Uh, so they just have the things now like the like Europeans are doing where you just kind of scan your passport and you exit um, That makes a lot of sense. I get why they don't do that for the entry ones, but for the exit ones I always thought that made sense like you're leaving dude, <laughs> but yeah, no, that's a nice little update So I'm down that way. That's the United section, but uh, I thought why not? I'll walk a little bit down here and show you if there's anything interesting uh, Just to give you a sense of what Narita looks like, but uh, I'm gonna be honest probably not much going on at this point So we are kind of at the end of this section a lot of stuff is closed, a lot of stuff is just kind of whatever. Nothing really special down here, but uh, yeah, uh, mostly ANA seems to just dominate this section, which makes sense. But uh, yeah, just a quick look at it. So we're now heading towards my section where stuff is still kind of open. Uh, at 6 o'clock it just hit and a bunch of stores started closing up, so 
Uh, this may not be a completely accurate representation of what it always looks like, but uh, anyway, I'll try to show you what I can. Prime example of what I was talking about. The other section has nothing. This place is a place called Tax Free Akihabara that's just full of insanity. <laughs> Yeah, there's a lot of cool stuff around here. All the food stuff is over here. There's a 7-Eleven in here. Uh, I'm gonna go get a coffee. Not necessarily Starbucks. I might hit up 7-Eleven, because why not? But uh, yeah, if you want like last minute goods and gifts, this is the section to go to. There's even like, it's closed at the moment, but right there, there's actually a little museum there. My mom quite enjoyed that, actually. Uh, she <laughs> I remember that. But uh, yeah, let's see. let's see what else we can find. There's a drugstore right up there, I remember that. And uh, my gate is going to be down there, but <sighs> I've still got plenty of time. It's called Kabuki Gate. But interestingly, they also have this. I'm not a smoker, but if you are, I guess you can go in there and just smoke for a while. I don't know, but it's a thing. Well, 7-Eleven is closing up, so that won't be an option. To Starbucks we go. Korean Air Lounge. Hilariously, I actually got in here once. Um, this, my mom and I actually did because when we had priority pass, that thing I was talking about before at the other lounge, uh, beyond security, Korean Air's lounge would actually accept that. So it didn't matter if you're flying on Korean Air or even flying on any one of the Sky Team airlines, they would still let you in if you had priority pass, which we did. Check this out. We got some new Kit Kats. We got the melon one from before. Looks like a new red bean mochi as well as strawberry cake. I'm gonna have to get some of those. So right here, we're just beyond the Akihabara place and you can see this giant United section. I told you, United treats this as a hub even though technically, legally, you can't do that. In fact, like they said, there is a United club here, which we could have been hanging out all day, man. Why did you have to be closed on me? What's, what's the deal with that? I mean, that sucks, it hurts my feelings and stuff. I've actually been in there, it's a very good one. It's huge, it's got a sushi bar, it's great. But no, it's closed currently, which sucks for me. But the question might present itself, why does United kind of treat uh, Narita as a hub? Um, I don't know the entire core origin of this, but uh, they do, but only in a sense the way airlines work. They're not legally allowed to operate flights um, between countries that the company is not part of. So for example, United could not operate a flight from say uh, Japan uh, to Hong Kong because neither part is part of the US. However, but because of Guam and the CNMI, the U.S. has a surprising large amount of land in this part of the world, and, and of course Hawaii. So they kind of said, okay, we can kind of treat Narita as a hub, and it'll just constantly fly out to our territories, back to Hawaii, of course the mainland from various places, which means that United has a whole bunch of different strange flight routes out of here, including tonight's flight out to Saipan, which is clearly a low-demand flight because they only, I think, operate that particular route from Tokyo Narita to uh, Saipan twice a week, but uh, still pretty cool. I'm gonna I'm gonna ride that one. Just before I get a bunch of people correcting me in the comments, there is one technical loophole to the whole like law about an airline has to start or end at its uh, national origin point, uh, which is touchdowns. Usually that's when a flight is considered incapable of safely making the flight without extra fuel. So like a flight from say London to Sydney is not really possible so they typically touch down in either like Malaysia or sometimes in Saudi Arabia just, just somewhere like in the middle-ish. Um, there was a time and I don't know exactly what the justification for it was but there was a time where United was actually operating flights between Seoul, South Korea and Tokyo, Narita and I obviously that's not a situation where they couldn't possibly have the fuel but I think the logic I say in quotations, was that, uh, oh, you know, the aircraft couldn't quite make it from Seoul to North America, so it's got its top in our, in our hub, again, hub in quotations, and uh, refuel. Um, that route no longer exists from what I can tell. I don't know why that was the case, because obviously there are aircraft that can do that, but I think the majority of aircraft cannot actually get uh, that far, like the Boeing uh, 747 can, but that's like a 45-year-old aircraft at this point. Uh, I know Korean Air is like one of the few airlines that still uses them, so that might be part of the logic, but I don't know, I'm no expert on that. It's just something that I remember reading. As small item, please place the beneath the seats in front of you.
So I'm here, I'm officially in Saipan. Uh, apologies for noise. Uh, it's kind of funny, actually, if you think about it. I left on December 31st. It is now January 4th. It, it, it didn't feel like it technically took five days to get here, but I guess logistically it did because, you know, I went through Texas and I went through Japan and we kind of lost an entire day. Anyway, yeah, I'm back in the United States, so I just have to clear customs. I think there's a global entry lane. We'll go use that. And then there's this card you have to fill out. It's an, um, just like a, not a customs declaration, but just a... I don't know, just like a survey, basically. Uh, and, oh, and we actually got a meal on that flight, which was nice. It was just like pasta and meatballs, but it was perfectly serviceable. Half a day. Um, so, yeah, I had global entry, so two seconds. I'm in and out. So now uh, we have to make our way over to the hotel, which will be an interesting thing to do at 2 in the morning. So just cleared, uh, not customs, but you know, they kind of ask questions about the bag and you give them that form I was talking about. Uh, all good there. Uh, so now I have to wait a little bit because it's raining. Uh, my buddy Glenn is going to come out and really pick me up and he's going to take me out to the uh, hotel and I will be rolling with him for the next few days. And I'm still wearing a hoodie, so this is, it's hotter here. You saw me like next to the half a day like thing saying like Saipan stuff on it and then all of a sudden we're outside. There's a room in between there where you have to do the custom stuff. There's a million warnings in the, there about do not film anything, which is really a shame because there's a lot of like, you know, CNMI specific decor in there, but they they will get really mad at you if you film any of that. Like, I think the first time I was ever here, I just took like a photo of something and a guy really mad came over and was like, delete that from your phone right now. And it wasn't even like, we're not talking like government sensitive stuff. It's like up in the rafters, there's just pictures of beaches that say Saipan. They, they warn you a million times, don't film in there, so I didn't even attempt. Just a reminder, if you are ever out here, if you ever need to rent a car, it would be right over there in that building. Uh, when you re-enter custom, re-enter the airport, it's over here, and there'll be a row of people waiting here for you if you need a taxi or anything, but keep in mind they usually only take cash. USD, of course. Hey guys, I, th I think my ride might be here. <laughs> are you Adam? Yeah, that's a really good reference, dude. Welcome to Saipan. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> So uh, Glenn just dropped me off here, which is really nice of them to do, and um, we'll talk more about that. But this is, we're going to go out with this. I'm now in my room at this place called the Residence Lodge, which is funny because Glenn and uh, he, they didn't, he had never heard of this place, but I found it on, uh, you know, just hotels.com, nothing specific. But this place is really cool. It's like this one guy, he's a, a Chinese expat who lives here, and he like bought up a, a couple of houses and then like retrofitted them all into like these little like uh, hotels, the rooms that all look like this, and then there's my bathroom back there and you know all that. And uh, super nice guy, like super nice. Like, you know, he knew I was coming at like two in the morning and he stayed up and he just waited. <laughs> and there's more people actually, I can hear them now because they probably all came on the same flight. But you know, we've got our little guidebook down here that's got information on Wi-Fi, special keys that get you in here, passcodes, like all the stuff. You just, uh, this is, this is cool. We're going to have fun. Okay, so the decor on the floor, Washington, D.C., July 4th, 1776, <laughs> New York, October 23rd, 1886, about the Statue of Liberty's erection. I think that that's um, kind of cool. You know, you're in America. <laughs> but then we also have references to like... Hong Kong, as I said, the, the owner is actually uh, Chinese. I don't know if he comes from Hong Kong specifically, but um, yeah, that's, uh, that's cool. And that'll do it for part two. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this kind of weird video. In the meantime, look forward to part three, in which we go down to Saipan, which you just saw at the very tail end there, I guess. Uh, but we're going to explore the entire island. Uh, Mikey and Glenn take me everywhere. We eat all sorts of food. We see just about everything there is to see. Uh, it's uh, it's a great time. I hope you guys will check it out and look forward to actually seeing some videos about the CNMI, because it's really great place that not a whole lot of people ever get to go to or check out so in the meantime do me a favor please like this video comment down below subscribe if you haven't done that already as well as follow me on all the social media stuff in the description twitter instagram facebook discord patreon etc appreciate that support thank you so much for watching and i'll see you all later